fighting for our inheritance, but also distributing uh, what we have to other people. And so, Brother Fred? Okay. The title of the message tonight is Distributing the Inheritance. Uh, Jesus Christ came to give us uh, a great inheritance. As a matter of fact, we are heirs with him, co-heirs. That means we're uh, heirs of the same thing he has. Everything Jesus has uh, is also designated for us. And so what we're going to be looking at tonight is how do we receive our inheritance but not only that, let's give it away. Let's pass mm -hmm. it on to others. Let the knowledge that God gives you uh, about the inheritance, go ahead and pass it on to other people. We, we don't want to leave this earth uh, with our children and grandchildren and other people around us not receiving their inheritance. Mm -hmm. I believe this is an important uh, message. And now inheritance, what is the inheritance? Well, it's the promises of God. And they're all for you. Uh, Jesus came to give you all of the promises. There are about 8,000 uh, promises uh, in the Bible, and they're all for you. Uh, they were purchased with a great price by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. A great, great price beyond any comprehension that we could have. And so let's get our inheritance. Uh, Jesus came to give us an inheritance and we can get it. We're going to be talking about how to receive our inheritance and how to pass it on, pass on the knowledge of receiving a, an inheritance. Now, now, in the Old Testament, we see that God used Joshua to lead God's people into the promised land. And so that's very parallel to what goes on in the New Testament. In the New Testament, God uses Jesus to, mm -hmm. uh, to lead us into the land of promises, Amen. into the multitude of promises. There are, like I said, about 8,000 promises, and we don't want to uh, go through life and not receive our promises. He's, he's re, uh, provided them for, for us. He, they've already been purchased. They, do, they don't have to be purchased. We have to discover them. We have to claim them. We have to uh, we have to stand on them, and we have to fight for them. And, and so that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. How can we receive it? How can we pass it on uh, to others? Uh, I want to start with uh, back in Numbers, uh, beginning in the thirteenth chapter, and then the fourteenth chapter about. Uh, the spies. There were 12 spies that uh, Moses sent into the promised land to look at the promise. This is what was promised to God. They went mm -hmm. in to spy it out. Have you gone to spy out your promises, mm -hmm. the land yeah. of what God has pr promised you? Have you spied it out? It's an important part of the process, but it doesn't end there. We can't we can't just say, okay, I spied it out. I found a promise. I found a, a multitude of promises and, and then expect them all to, to come upon you. And, and what we really see is that it was divided into two groups, the 10 spies who were unbelievers and the two uh, that were believers. And let's look first at, at the way they talked and did they claim their promises. Amen. And of, of course, the unbelievers did not believe just let, let's look at their conversation, at their dialogue, what they said. This is really important, what we say about our promises. Look at the 10 unbelievers first in Numbers 13. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we are. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out. The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw are men of great stature, are giants. They were giants. There are there we saw the giants, and we were like little grasshoppers in their sight. Can you imagine the amount of doubt and unbelief in those few verses? Yeah. Just a few verses, and yet they express so much doubt and unbelief. They did not 
say that there was no promises over there, that the promised land wasn't good. They just talked about all of the enemies and how difficult it was, and they weren't strong enough, and they weren't, well, we don't need to be looking at the problem. We need to be looking at how big is our God. Amen. That, that's the issue. Amen. It's, it's not Amen. how big are our, our enemies, how big are the giants, how big is your God? And your God is bigger than anything you Hallelujah. face. Hallelujah. Now let's look at the different attitude, the different perspective that Caleb and Joshua had. These were the two who believed. All 12 went in, saw the same land, but they came back with different reports. Amen. Uh, don't come back with an evil report when you spy Amen. out the land. Okay, I want Sherry to read Numbers 14, 9. Listen to their perspective. <clears throat> okay. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are your bread. Ooh, hallelujah. Their protection has departed from them. That means that they're not protected anymore. And you can go in and get them and eat them. And the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Okay. Totally different perspective of the 10 unbelievers and the two believers. believers. Well, how are you talking about your promises, about your inheritance? Well, one of the things that Joshua and Caleb said is don't rebel mm -hmm. against God. Now, what was the rebellion about? It was about not fighting. Fighting. Uh, see, if you don't fight for your promises, you're rebelling against God. Mm -hmm. Let me mm -hmm. say that again. Mm -hmm. If you don't fight for your promises, you're rebelling against God. And that's what the 10 had brought back a report that they were not going to fight and they caused the, the courage uh, to leave all of the all descendants of, the, yeah. of Israel, all of them, just because of one bad report. And we can't do that. That's rebellion. If we're not willing to go up and fight for what is ours. Another thing I want you to, to see is that Joshua and Caleb said, hey, the giants are our bread. Now, what did Hallelujah. they mean by that? Hallelujah. We've got to eat. We've got to devour yeah. our enemies. And that becomes our nourishment for the journey. Mm, Hallelujah. Mm, mm. Let me say that again. The giants are our bread. And that's the nourishment we get from devouring our enemies. So God yeah. has given you yeah. many promises. And let's don't rebel against God by not fighting for it. We need to be prepared to uh, fight for our promises. Whatever God has given you, it, there's going to be a fight. And so be, get prepared. Get Get your full armor amen, on. Amen, There's amen. going to be a fight, but you've got to fight. Not fighting is rebellion. And yeah. eating the enemies, devouring the enemies, that is going to give you nourishment and strength for the journey ahead. Okay, Sherry, but, you're going to have something. Yeah, I just, I just have something that we're believing for, and that is our whole household will be saved. Our grandchildren, our great-grandchild, we're believing for all of them to come into the kingdom of God uh, to receive Jesus. And that's a promise. And we are willing to fight for that promise uh, through prayer, through speaking out the word of God over them. Uh, we, are, we are ready to fight. And that's our nourishment. And every time we overcome one of our difficulties, one of our situations, uh, struggles, uh, every time we overcome, that's bread to us. That feeds our spirit man. It causes faith to rise up. And, I'm, you know, the famous evangelist uh, Smith Wigglesworth uh, said that out of great trials comes great faith. And I'm looking at a group of people that I'm sure you have been through some trials and tribulation. And when you've overcome those, you're stronger. You are, you have received nourishment and bread, and you have eaten one of the giants. Gobble, gobble. Amen. And you're ready to move on to the next one. Yes. Okay, now Sherry gave you a good example. Here's a promise. Our whole household shall be saved. Well, mm -hmm. that, we have three children. There are three spouses, seven grandchildren, and uh, the first uh, great-grandchild. And so we're believing all of those. And it's not going to end there because 
Uh, the, uh, our other grandchildren, uh, they will yet have families. And so we're believing for all of those. That, that's a promise Amen. worth fighting for. And we don't want to leave anybody on this earth that is not destined uh, for heaven. Not that's in right. our family, that's right. not in the people around us. We want everybody to go to heaven. And that's God's heart. He's, it, it is a will that none perish. Amen. We've got Amen. to fight for these things. Now, not only do we want to receive the promises for ourselves, but then we want to distribute those promises to other people, make sure that they uh, receive the, their inheritance. And if you know how to receive an inheritance, then you can teach others. You can show others how to receive their inheritance. Well, first, we're going to look at different generations. In different generations, there were people designated to distribute the inheritance. Mm -hmm. uh, to pass it on, pass it out to the people. And then I'm saying that in your generation, you're the one. Make sure Hallelujah. that the inheritance it goes on, that, that it doesn't stop with you, but it goes on to the next generation and the next. Okay, so the first one we see is Moses. Moses, God told him to distribute the promised land, to distribute the inheritance mm -hmm. to the families. Let's read that. Numbers 33. Verse 54, and you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your families. Okay, but God also said the same to Joshua. Mm -hmm. Now, Moses didn't do it. He did not divide it uh, to the families. But, but God came back and gave the same instructions and commandment to Joshua. So there has to be mm -hmm. people in every generation who are going to realize that the inheritance is worth fighting for, but not only that, it's worth passing it on to other people. Joshua mm -hmm. had some commandments from him, from God about distributing the inheritance. Let's read uh, Joshua 1, 3 and 1, 6. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given it unto you. Okay, I want to just pause here for a moment and say you've got to stand on your promises. You know, there's a, a spiritual song that said, standing on the promises of Christ, mm -hmm. my Savior. Savior. We've got to stand on it. See, the Israelites could have walked up there to the uh, Jordan River, and they could have peered across and said, God has given us all of that land, so it's mine, but never go across. And they could say, oh, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. But you, they had to go and stand on the land. They had to bring down the enemies. Mm -hmm. They had to destroy the enemies. Mm -hmm. You have to stand on the promises. Now, now, we saw how Joshua and Caleb said, they said, uh, We're well able. We're well able. God's given us this land. The defenses of the people, they're already gone. They didn't say, oh, this is going to happen in the sweet by and by. He said their defenses have already been destroyed. And, and so here's uh, what... God said to Joshua in one, the sixth verse. Mm -hmm. And Joshua I know that we, we've all heard this message preached to all of us, that we are all supposed to be strong and, and courageous. courageous. But what about the last part of the verse? So I want you to read all of Joshua be strong, 1, 6. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to your father's, to give unto them. Okay, so this verse is for each of you. And, and it, you've heard it preached to you many times. Be strong and very courageous. But that verse doesn't end there. It said, divide the inheritance Hallelujah. to the people. And so in your case, it'd be divide the inheritance to your children and your grandchildren and get with it now. Now, now some of you don't have many children yet, but uh, they're going to grow up and, and there's going to be multiplication in your family and, and descendants, more descendants. Uh, so it's a responsibility for all of us in every generation. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead and read this. Joshua eleven twenty three. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord had said to Moses. And Joshua gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to the division of their tribes. Okay, so Joshua did what God told him. Mm -hmm. He was strong, very courageous. He went and stood on the land, and he uh, fought, overcame the enemies, and he distributed the 
inheritance mm -hmm. to the people. So, but it has to happen in every generation. Right. See, after a while, when the Israel rebelled against God, they were sent uh, exiled into uh, captivity into Babylon, but they were only there for a period of time. Then they were coming back. And so God told uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel to distribute the inheritance. It has to be distributed in every generation. generation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see what he said. Ezekiel forty-seven twenty-one. Thus you shall divide this land among yourselves according to the tribes of Israel. And then let me read Ezekiel 48, 29. This is the land which you shall divide by lot as an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. Okay, so in every generation, we have to distribute the inheritance again. And so that's the way it is with us. We're wanting our family to come in to their inheritance Amen. that, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ purchased for them. Now, let's bring it home. Let's go into the New Testament and think about what is our inheritance? What does it look like? And we're going to see it here in Second Peter uh, chapter 1. Verses 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God. Okay. Grace and peace be multiplied. So the inheritance, you see that word multiplication, multiply, that's an abundance. The inheritance, in the inheritance, there is abundance. Okay. Okay. And of our Lord Jesus Christ, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Okay. Is that it? No. By which we have been given to us exceeding and great precious promises okay. that through these you may be partakers of God's divine nature. Okay. Hallelujah. So what is our inheritance? It's the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Where did they come from? Well, the source is God. The channel is Jesus Christ. And it comes by us knowing, having the knowledge of God. It is an abundant, so let me just go through some, just make some points here. It is an abundant inheritance, number one. Number two, the source of it is God. And number three, the channel is Jesus Christ. And it comes through us through the knowledge. So it's knowledge. It's about knowledge. There, there are two references to knowledge here. Not only do we need to know about our inheritance, but we need to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is our Lord. And it, then it's the power that gives us everything that relates to life. It's the Holy Ghost. Life yes. and godliness. Amen. So it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's through those promises. And mm -hmm. that's, we, we are transformed through the promises we're transformed into the image of Jesus Christ, into the very nature of God, having the very nature of God. So our inheritance is the promise. So that if you have a, something, a situation that you're facing, and you need something from God, you need to look for the promises. That's where your inheritance is. And everything you need is in the promises. So it's whatever fits your situation, and whatever you need, there is a promise for it. And out mm -hmm. of those 8,000 or so promises, you find the promises. It's up to you to discover the promise that mm -hmm. fits your situation and meets your need. And once you discover it, then you need to claim it. You need to say, hey, this is mine. I'm calling it forth. Speak like Joshua and Caleb. Speak with faith, with words of faith, Amen. and claim Amen. your promises and proclaim that you have these promises. Don't put them off into the sweet by and by, into the uh, far distant future, because you'll never get them. You, you need to claim them today by faith. And you need to stand on those verses on those promises. That's what I see Caleb and uh, uh, Joshua did. They went and they stand, stand in and stood on the promised land, stood on the promises. We need to do the same thing. Speak like Joshua and Caleb spoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's already yours. The, the enemies are your bread. That's your nourishment, 
you just go ahead and receive them. So we're, we're going then, then uh, to our promises. All of those promises, those are our inheritance. If you want one part of your inheritance, you have to know a promise. You have to see it in scripture. Where is your promise? Is it something that God has spoken to you directly? Is it, have you found it in the word of God? Where is it? It's that promise. Now you need to discover it, claim it, stand on it, receive it, fight off the enemies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, in the, I, did, I just uh, want to interject something here. And that is one of uh, the ministers that are connected with uh, uh, the ministry. Uh, uh, she she went to pray with a, a woman who has just had uh, heart uh, surgery and has been having some uh, a lot of uh, discomfort and pain and and some other issues that have that have shown themselves. So this this minister went to pray with this lady and and she gave her the word and and anointed her and prayed with her and and but the last thing that the woman said before um this lady left um was well i sure hope that that jesus will do this and that's not the hope that is in there's three that remain um, faith hope and and love that's not that faith what she was talking about was that she it was like she was wishing something and and that that's unbelief and you have right to know there. that jesus is not going to do anymore he he went to the cross he said it's finished he provided everything Amen. and everything is in a promise and you have to find the promise and you have to claim the promise. You have to fight for the promise. You have to stand on the promise. You have to overcome some enemies. You, you don't just think that it's going to happen it, yeah, just because you intensely think that something's going to happen. It's not. There is a process here. You have to discover your promise. You have to claim it. You have to stand on it and you have to do, devour the enemies that would keep you from it. What kind of Amen. enemies? Well, they might be doubt, fear, unbelief, uh, anxiety. All of those are devils. Those, those are enemies. You have to overcome all those. You can't let those uh, stay there. Now, on the promises then, it's going to lead us into the nature, in the very nature of God. And, and if you look at the Old Testament, the priests did not receive land. Their inheritance was the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. Now, who are you? You are a priest. Let's look at uh, 2 Peter uh, 1, 9. No, 1 Peter. For, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, 1 Peter. 1 Peter 2, 9. 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of, of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, so your inheritance is promises, promise, 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 all the promises. But as you begin to get more and more of the promises, they become alive to you, alive in your life. Then you're taking on the nature of God and your full inheritance, That's your right. full inheritance, your ultimate inheritance is the Lord himself. Because you are the priest, and that is your inheritance. And you it's will the eat Lord. the giants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me my giant today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. So let's let's think about uh, uh, some things here and bringing it uh, to understanding how to actually uh, apprehend our inheritance. Our ap and it starts with those promises. But then we get the fullness of it. We get Christ himself as our inheritance. Now, mm -hmm. what I want you to know is that many of the promises are conditional. Mm -hmm. There are conditions on them. I want you to read from Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, there's the condition. To observe carefully all his commandments, another condition which I command you today, 
that the Lord your God will set you on high above the nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Okay, what are the inheritance? It's the blessings, all of the blessings of God. Uh, how do you get them? There is a condition. You have to listen to what the Lord is saying and obey him. So I want you to know that there are 8,000 promises, but many of them have conditions. And if you don't meet the conditions, uh, you don't get it. And, and so let's look at other ways to receive our promises. Let's look at Abraham. How did he do? Or look at Romans Romans 4, 4 20 and 21. Abraham did not stagger at the promises of God. He did not waver. One day he was a believer and the next day he was in doubt and unbelief. No, he did not waver uh, at the promise that God had given him through unbelief, but he was strengthened by faith, giving glory to God. You know, I, I, I just want to say one thing about this. When you think about Abraham, you think about Abraham being strong and full of faith and not wavering, but there could have been days that the enemy came and said, you know, that promise is never going to be fulfilled. You're never going to be the father of many nations. And, and your descendants are not going to be like the sand of the, of the seashore. And, but he, so he had to keep that faith level up. And the same thing happened with me uh, when, when they, they spoke and diagnosed me with cancer, uh, terminal cancer. The, the test kept coming back showing that the cancer was still there. And there were things that the doctor said to me, uh, you know, you'll, you're going to die in six months. And, and, and then there were things that the, the devil would come and whisper in my ear. Well, what about your husband? What about your children? They won't have a mother and you won't ever sing again. You won't ever teach again. And, and so those were things that, that, those were giants that had to be overcome. That had to be overcome, and I had to gobble them up. And that's the way I did that was I went back to that one scripture that the Lord had given me in Psalms one eighteen seventeen. And you've heard me say this many times, but I keep I kept going back to that one verse: "You shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord." And that's many. And and I would say that over and over, so that the giants would be overcome. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. So, All right, let me read on. But he was fully convinced or persuaded that God was able to perform the promise. Okay. Now let's, let's move on to Romans 8, and it talks about we are, we have an inheritance, and it's through Jesus Christ, and through that we have, a, he, we are an heir to the inheritance. Let's read these verses here. Please. The Spirit himself bears witness with what, ours. Where are they? Romans 8, 16, and 17. Okay. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Who, who confirms that in your life? It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That you are an heir. Okay. And a what? A joint heir? A joint heir with Jesus Christ. Whatever Jesus inherits, it's yours. Hallelujah. You are a joint heir. That, that didn't mean a, a big heir and a little heir. It's joint. That, that, mm -hmm. that they're equal. Okay. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And let's talk just a moment about that word suffer. Okay. So it, it's allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us, allow the word of God work in us that we be transformed. See, we're not going to Amen. stay the same. We, we need to allow God to work in our lives to transform us little by little into the image of Jesus Christ. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to work, the word of God to work in our life. We have to accept that we're going to be transformed in his image. You cannot be transformed if you do not change. And if you do not allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Okay. 
Then I want to close with this uh, uh, in Ephesians. There are enemies. We still have enemies yeah. to overcome, and we have to stand on our promises. Amen. Read this in Ephesians 6. Yeah, Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. Other people, uh, your co-worker, your family members, your friends, uh, your neighbors, uh, the people in, in, in other positions, they are not your enemy. It says here, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but with principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, stand. Oh, I said you've got to stand hallelujah. on your promises. You've got to stand on the inheritance. Oh, hallelujah. This is... But this is important for us. If you're going to, if you're facing a situation and you need a breakthrough, what you need to do is to discover the promise Amen. that will go with it and give you victory over your problem. And you discover the promise, you claim it. See, you've got to release it with your words. It's not good no. enough for me to say that. You've got to say and declare and claim your promise and you've got to stand on it and the way to stand and we'll go back to uh numbers 14 9 i'm going to ask you to read this verse again it's right at the beginning uh numbers 14 9 this is how joshua and caleb th this simple verse that they're talking about it shows so much faith in it and this is a good example of how can we stand on our promises Read this verse, mm -hmm. Sherry. Only do not rebel against the Lord. In other words, be willing to fight. Nor fear the people of the land. For they are your bread. Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with you. Do not fear them. Mm -hmm. And let me go down to Matthew 6, 11. Remember in, the, in what we call the Lord's Prayer? He says, give us this day our daily bread our daily bread now you know i've heard it taught many times well this daily bread is is the word of god it's your promise hallelujah and that's how you defeat your enemies but that's how you defeat but them your daily bread you could also insert my daily giant my daily giant Give me this Hallelujah. Day, my daily giant i'm going to devour him amen and it's going to be nourishment for me and i'm going to be able to move on yes and receive my promises but i don't want it to end there i want to pass it on i want to show other people the inheritance that they have and help them i can pray for them i can teach them for my for you, for other people, for children, for our children, for our grandchildren. Oh, we want to pass it on. Every generation has to receive their inheritance and they have to pass it on. Show others how they can receive their inheritance and walk in it. We don't want anybody going without their inheritance. Amen. Thank you for being here. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. I just want to, um, to bring this point uh, to all of us. And that is when we release the word, then we are in the kingdom of God. When that's, that's where it puts us. It puts us right there with the Lord. He's fighting for us. He's with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. When we speak his word, when we release it. However, when a person releases words that are contrary to the word of God, then it puts them in enemy territory. It puts them in the devil's territory, the kingdom of darkness. So we need, when we release, we need to be releasing the word of God. And, and also I just wanna share this with you. If the first point that Brother Fred made was discover the promise that's for you. 
uh, whatever you you need from the Lord, whatever provision you need from the Lord, then the first part of the process is to discover your promise. And let me just add this to to what he was was saying to you, and that is we just dis, we can discover the promise uh, through prayer, through praying in the Spirit and releasing. Uh, that the the wisdom of God inside of us, that's another thing that the baptism of the Holy Spirit does. It releases uh, that wisdom on the inside of you so so you can you can pray for it, you can uh, utilize your your prayer language uh, and you can also um, ask him, ask the Holy Spirit, you know, give me. Uh, give me the verse that you want me to to stand on, Amen. and uh, and Amen. all of those things. And you can study the word. You read it and study it, and study commentaries and what people are writing about a particular subject. If you have sickness or if you have fear or anxiety, look at the that the promises that God has given in those areas, and the ones that stand out, they become alive to you. Those are the promises that you can stand on. So that's how you discover them. Amen. And then you begin to claim them and, and speak just like Joshua and Caleb spoke. Speak with words of faith. And you might say, well, is that promise for me? Well, you know, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 says, in Christ, mm, all of the promises, promises. are yes. yes. So there's 8,000 of them and they're all yes, yes for you. Yes. In Christ, if you're in Christ, and then you're supposed to say, amen, let it be for me. So he says yes to the 8,000 promises. So you can't find a promise that's not for you. All of the promises are for you. They're all yes oh, in yeah. Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah. And you're the one that says, amen, it's for me. Amen. Jesus says, yes, it's for you. You say, amen, it's for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.